Uh, dear colleagues, I'll be presenting the effects of terahertz radiation on the development of biological organisms one with seeds. Uh, the one stands for the fact that I want to continue uh, with uh, researching in this uh, uh, field. Now, uh, the initial spark or the idea for this study uh, started when I stumbled upon um, an article a few months ago regarding how terahertz radiation can disrupt proteins in living cells uh, without killing them, which is an outstanding finding that contra uh, uh, at that time contradicted the conventional belief that terahertz radiation uh, is uh, safe. However, what is uh, terahertz radiation in the first place? Well, it's a type of electromagnetic radiation that uh, whose frequency uh, stands between those of microwaves and infrared radiation, which are known uh, mostly for the thermal effects on various materials and organisms. Uh, the image is credit to uh, the Zentrum für Luft und uh, Raumfahrt. Uh, the effects of terahertz uh, radiation on various biological organisms, um, mainly uh, in the literature, in the scientific literature, it has been documented that, uh, well, the effects depend on various factors ranging from tissue density to ATP content and to met uh, from metabolism to uh, various macro uh, molecules that are found in the, uh, in, in the cells that are exposed to uh, terahertz. Uh, the effects uh, summarized mainly are on organelles, uh, well, uh, on nuclear plasma, it has been seen that there is not much of an effect, uh, mainly because uh, nuclear plasma seems to be extremely resilient, perhaps because it's a uh, double layer of, um, uh, of uh, phospholipids. Um, more of uh, ribosomal proteins and mRNA, which are very, um, which are in a way very reactive, uh, may denature uh, from the effects of terahertz radiation. Um, unlike other proteins which may be more stable, but it depends from organism to organism. Uh, vacuoles, lysosomes, peroxisomes, uh, and other such uh, vacuoles uh, may leak their contents in the, um, in the cytoplasm of their cells, which may compromise their function or even uh, kill them. Uh, moreover, mitochondria uh, are seen to produce more reactive oxygen species and nitrogen species, though not always. It's uh, as always it's dependent on uh, the species that is studied. Um, in regards to uh, the main categories of cells that have been studied in the past by other researchers, um, mammalian cells uh, are sometimes affected um, in a positive way. But sometimes their uh, may uh, their membranes may either become leaky or the cells might die. Um, in regards to bacteria, for example, um, they are uh, usually uh, they were seen to uh, to uh, their growth was seen to be slowed down, but uh, not be deadly. Um, it's worth noting that. So far, um, terahertz radiation has been studied on Escherichia coli um, alone uh, for now. Uh, on fungi, on the other hand, uh, it has been seen that terahertz radiation causes growth. And on plants, uh, there, there were only four studies that uh, investigated the effects of terahertz radiation on plants. And it has been seen mainly that uh, growth ensues. However, in uh, paddy rice, it has been also seen that chlorophyll mutation also occurs. Um, the effects of terahertz uh, on wheat seeds. So the methods were, uh, I, uh, we first gathered uh, 600 wheat seeds, which were then divided into multiple batches, uh, which were then further divided into subgroups. The multiple batches, uh, well, there were two batches, one were uh, seeds were um, were exposed dry, and one where uh, the seeds were exposed after coming to contact with water. Um, uh, then these were um, separated into various uh, uh, subgroups depending on how much they were 
um, exposed to terahertz radiation. We had samples from uh, zero, which was the control group, to uh, one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and 30 minutes. Uh, no subsequent exposure to terahertz radiation was uh, administered to these seeds after the initial exposure. So when they were growing, they were uh, growing without any uh, influence of uh, any additional terahertz radiation. They were then left to sprout and develop over a period of seven days, during which it was uh, a bit of a hassle and chaotic process, mainly because they didn't quite have the uh, necessary condition conditions in the first place to grow they uh, the laboratory was uh, uh, had the dry air and uh, the water quickly evaporated from uh, the petri dishes that uh, we used to uh, to uh, grow them uh, and as such it took them uh, much longer to sprout during uh, which time some of the seeds might have died and uh, might have uh, in uh, uh, might have affected in a bad way the study. Um, to expose the seeds to terahertz radiation, uh, the spectroscope uh, TerraView TPS uh, Spectra 3000, uh, which has an optical tunable uh, titanium sapphire ultra short pulsed laser with the description uh, regarded there. Um, Effect, uh, the effects on of uh, terahertz radiation on wheat seeds, uh, the results were uh, were mixed in uh, in the sense that uh, terahertz, uh, as seen in our data, may lead to less sprouting overall. But that might be because of the conditions of the laboratory and not necessarily terahertz itself. Moreover. Um, uh, the seeds that do sprout uh, usually grow up uh, more quickly than their counter counterparts. However, a general trend uh, that was seen was the fact that the dry ones uh, seem to have been more affected by their health, both in terms of percentage of germination uh, success, which was lower than uh, in the case of uh, wet seeds, as well as speed of growth, which was increased uh, when compared to wet seeds. As such, water may act as a shield uh, um, against terahertz radiation in the sense that it doesn't uh, allow a terahertz radiation to be uh, properly absorbed by the seeds, uh, uh, which may not lead to the changes that were seen in the dry ones. Um, mechanism of action is uh, still yet to, uh, unknown even though uh, there have been multiple studies that have investigated the effects of terahertz radiation in all kinds of organisms this is the first kind of study that tackles this issue in seeds in uh, particularly uh, in wheat seeds but in seeds overall but the mechanism is still unknown it's uh, uh, theorized that uh, terahertz radiation may uh, cause a small, uh, very small areas of increased heat, which uh, then may cause some changes. Or it was also theorized that uh, terahertz radiation may uh, help at unzipping DNA in certain places by creating small bubbles of sorts. But it's not clear in any way how it works. Um, uh, in regards to importance and applications of this study, um, the technology could be used to combat droughts and climate change, uh, droughts and climate changes effects on crops, because seeds may be exposed for a certain optimal amount of time before being used by farmers, optimal amount of time which would uh, minimize the damage while increasing, uh, while maximizing the uh, growth speed that the seeds would have uh, after exposure. Um, they may also uh, the technology may also be used for um, accelerating growth in some other plant species, though um, much more research is needed since uh, different species of plants have different metabolisms and different kinds of uh, seeds. So dosage and reaction may differ significant, uh, significantly. Um, weak points of this uh, study are mainly uh, the mixed data, the uh, small sample size, uh, conditions unfavorable for growing uh, from the beginning of the study. And um, uh, overall, more research is needed, particularly on how the mechanism, uh, uh, how, uh, what is the mechanism behind 
how terahertz uh, affects microorganisms and uh, especially uh, seeds. Um, uh, more research is also needed on the effects of uh, on uh, seeds resistance towards drought uh, after exposure to terahertz because uh, we have not grown them uh, out in the field, but rather in a laboratory with controlled um, uh, with controlled uh, temperature and um, humidity. Uh, and the best amount of time for minimal damage and maximum growth must be also um, assessed before the seeds can be. Uh, before the technology can be used on seeds in in an actual uh, useful setting. And uh, lastly, um, more research is also needed on mutations because it is, uh, uh, it is very probable that uh, the seeds did suffer some mutations, even if not necessarily on how um, the sequence of Nucleotides uh, are uh, is in the in their DNA, but uh, terahertz radiation may have uh, um, turned on or off certain genes in DNA. So the effects on uh, the long term effects on the genetic material of uh, these seeds must be assessed before they can be used. Um, this uh, research is uh, particularly uh, helped by the fact that. University of Rochester uh, has uh, managed to generate terahertz radiation from water, which would mean that uh, the, the technology could become much more um, easy to use uh, since uh, what I have used was uh, were some crystals made of, out of titanium and sapphire. So uh, that is prohibitive in, the, uh, in how the technology could be used on a large scale. But if... Uh, um, if terahertz can be uh, created from liquid water, then uh, the technology may only have to um, to overcome the issues regarding those stated before, regarding the mechanism of action and so on, before it can actually be used uh, on a much larger scale. Thank you for your attention. Uh, this was all. Okay, any questions? I have a question to you. I would like to know if you know that uh, in Bucharest, in Megureli platform, there are such uh, Erasmus laboratory. Um, is a gamma radiation of different objects? Yeah, I'm afraid that uh, gamma radiation is a type of radiation that is uh, very different from terahertz in the sense that uh, uh, it's mm, ionizing and it's damaging while terahertz is quite on yeah. the other side. Yes, the... it, is, it is very different, uh, but I, I would like to, to, to know if you compare, for example, the effect of gamma radiation and effect of terahertz radiation because both has positive and both has negative peculiarity and moments and uh, both uh, may be stimulated or inhibit different process and uh, study materials depend on the for example the um, frequency depend on the uh, time of the radiation and depend on the object for yes yeah, so um yeah, in a way, in this sense, it's uh, very similar to how um, to the effects that uh, gamma rays have on biological organisms. Though I'm thinking that terahertz radiation has a much more uh, mild and uh, nature in the sense of how it can be used, in the sense that it is not as dangerous as uh, gamma rays. Uh, for example, terahertz. Uh, mm, a uh, large dosage of terahertz may, at the very most, um, cause some leaky membranes and some protein unfolding, but nothing too uh, terrible to cause lasting damage in the way that gamma rays do. So I'm thinking that um, uh, they are usable in a much more controlled manner than uh, gamma rays could. Gamma rays are like 
if, if I were to describe them, and their effects on biological organisms, like a tank that just goes through everything and does not care for what happens. But uh, with terahertz radiation, I'm thinking that's more of a soldier that knows where to shoot and where to go and how to properly assess the situation. And uh, to Magurele, I'm not sure if they have terahertz radiation. It would be very interesting to work with them and find out, but uh, I'm, I'm, I, I have no idea. Thank you. Thank you for that.